here's the theory part I've got the instructions here for my gauge master which I believe is just a rebranding of Pico PM1 point motor and what I found when I looked at this particular diagram was that in addition to the ability to connect it to a switch I have the ability to connect up to an auxiliary device and in my case my auxiliary device is going to be light bulbs but essentially if I put current in to this wire here which connects up to the F connection depending on which way the switch has set the points I'll get a, a, a circuit back on either pin D or pin E so if it's set to the left it will be D if it's set to the right it will be E so what that translates into is this little diagram here of how I'll set things up so for actually switching the points themselves I'll use the AC power of my transformer connect the common wire to C and put a stud on A and a stud on B then take the negative connector hook it up to a pen device if I hit A point shoots to the left if I hit B point shoots to the right I then wire up these other three connections as follows to a 12 volt supply and at the moment I'm just going to mess around I got a um, the DC output on the same controller I set up my common comes in to connection F on the point motor and I set up the other which for me is going to be negative into a light bulb both sides and I take D to the other connection on the light bulb and and likewise E and the way it works is as the point motor swings left based on activating with the stud a little washer under the point motor connects F and D and so the circuit is created and this light bulb goes off if the point motor goes right it's made between F and E and this light bulb goes off so that's the theory now let's go and have a look at it in practice welcome to the workbench so anyway I rigged up this little test bed I've been thinking about doing a pen and stud instead of switches so before I've been using these type switches or I've been using a DCC to switch I quite like the idea of having some kind of a, a you know a track plan drawn out and just being able to switch by touching your contacts right on the on the plan so what I've done is I've got a couple of carpet tacks actually um, as my studs on the other side of this um, they're wired up to the connectors on the point motor here per the handy dandy diagram they give you with it and that runs back to my uh, AC power right now I've hooked DC power up to the light bulbs and net result of which is light is on currently indicating the point is set to the right I come along with my pen and touch the other side and now the light is on indicating that the motor has flipped the other way so there goes the motor and there goes the light so this was just a little proof of concept uh, got 12 volt grain of wheat bulbs here I just turned the power off that's why the light went out um, you could get these in bulk from eBay or whatever dirt cheap um, 
like I said, this experiment I just used carpet tacks. The reason why I chose carpet tacks is they're black and the fascia I'm likely going to paint black with a white background so I thought black studs on a, a black background might look might look quite sharp. So the the wiring looks a lot more complicated than in reality it is. Um, back here the the blue, green and yellow wires are what are driving the power to the point motor there. Um, so they're hooked up to the studs. And then anything else is really there for the lighting which is uh, both light bulbs run to a common um, a common feed and is always powered. The rest of them go to the uh, the connections on the on the point motor itself. So we'll see that with the, the, this little proof of concept done. I now know how many point motors I have to buy of each type. 